What's up guys, Rick from DFS On Demand here with something that I've been thinking about for a long time and it relates to the different types of players there are on the PGA Tour and how that relates to fantasy or more specifically DraftKings scoring. So obviously there's a lot of different ways to get the ball in the cup. Uh, you can be Dustin Johnson and bomb it 350 yards, hit a wedge and make a putt. Or you can just plod your way down the course um, and, and get the ball in the cup just by playing well around the greens and putting really well. Unfortunately for some players, uh, DraftKings scoring heavily weighs those that are under par often, okay? Birdies, Eagles, uh, that is all major scoring categories in DraftKings. And if you watch these videos, you know that because we talk about it almost every single week. So what I wanted to do was find a way to see who these valuable golfers are, right? Because a golfer who makes you know, who shoots even par by making nine birdies and nine bogeys is way more valuable than a golfer who shoots even par by making 18 pars. It's just a net positive to make a birdie and a bogey than it is to make a par. Um, and then you throw in the birdie streaks and all that stuff, and you can really get, get high up on the leaderboard. So to kind of show you what I'm talking about here, I'm going to pull up the game logs just from a, a recent tournament and what you're going to be able to see this is the rsm classic and what you're able to see is we're sorted by draft king scoring so i've got the highest you know ranked draft kings players for this tournament you know one through whatever and if you look at what their actual finishing position is is that it doesn't always add up right so here's jason gore who is the two, four, six, eight, basically ninth highest scoring draft kings player but he actually finished 15th in the tournament. And the reason for that is he had, you know, one birdie, he had 20, I'm sorry, one eagle, he had 20 birdies, which is more than Zach Johnson, who finished in seventh place, and he made some more bogeys. But what we're talking about is that's okay. It is okay uh, to make a lot of birdie, uh, bogeys if you're going to make a lot of birdies to offset them. Gore, who finished 15th in the tournament, had the same number of DraftKings points as Kevin Kisner, who finished seventh. Uh, Nick Watney finished 23rd in the tournament. He had more DraftKings points than Peter Uline, who finished 7th, and a bunch of guys who finished in 15th. So this is happening on a weekly basis where these players are outperforming their finishing position with DraftKings points. So I really wanted to build a tool to kind of figure out who these golfers are and who are the most valuable golfers, and I've created this, which I've so apt aptly named the most valuable golfers tool, right? Because someone who is scoring uh, better in fantasy than they are in their finishing position on, on the PGA Tour uh, is more valuable. So how did we do this? Um, first of all, as you guys probably know, I have the game logs for something like the last 12 years of PGA Tour. Uh, so what I did is I, I took all of those and I ranked every player's DraftKings score for each tournament and compared it to their actual finishing position. If you had a better DraftKings rank than a quote tournament rank, that was good. Okay. So we calculated that. And then basically we ran that for, you know, all 12 years. I have it sorted right now by the last year um, to find which players have the highest average, what I'm calling is an MVG score, which is just most valuable golfer. Um, so the players who have the highest average MVG, and this is what we're looking at. So for the last year, Aaron Wise is the most valuable draft king scorer with a 3.55 MVG. And the way to read this is basically he on average finishes 3.5 spots better in DraftKings scoring than he does for his finishing position in the tournament. And some of these names are not really all that surprising, right? Phil Mickelson is a valuable DraftKings player because he makes so many birdies. He's going to make a ton of bogeys to go with it, but this MVG score bears this out. Justin Thomas, another one of these players. So I've got, you know, you can put in any any time frame that you want here. You know, I can go back two years or I can go back six months. Here's where I was uh, basically having having to have a therapy session uh, with Pat Mayo on Twitter, which is in the last two years, Luke List is actually the most valuable fantasy golfer 
on uh, on DraftKings, and and it makes sense, right? Like like I know you're, you might be thinking like, oh, he only finishes three spots ahead or two spots ahead um, in DraftKings scoring than he does in in the PGA Tour, but that's an average, guys, right? Like it is it is not uncommon at all to see these guys who are you know finishing twentieth, twenty fifth, be the 10th highest scoring DraftKings player, the 12th high, like it's happening on a weekly basis all the time. So this is just an average. Um, so keep that in mind as you're looking through this. This is actually a really big number for Luke List to be 3.2 uh, MVG. And, and the players start to make sense, right? Like we see JT, we see Tony Finau. So um, that makes me pretty happy. And then what I have here on the right is um, just your chart here. So I, if I go back to one year, um, you'll see the, the darker blue is the player's average uh, DraftKings rank. And then the lighter blue is uh, the player's average finishing position on the PGA Tour. So you actually want that dark blue line to be shorter than the light blue. So in this case for Justin Thomas, you can see his average DraftKings rank is 14.5 and his averaging average finishing position is uh, 16.7, which gives him an MVG of 2.2. And I just threw in how many starts that was. So 15 starts in the last year qualify for this. Um, this black line is actually their MVG. So players who are under zero are actually less valuable than those who are above zero. So this is what we've talked about so often on this channel is Tiger Woods last year was very, very dependent on his finishing position. Um, he was not making enough birdies, not making enough eagles to warrant his price tag unless he was going to finish high in the golf tournament. And this is actually being bared out by the MVG score, which was actually one of the worst last year. Um, players above zero, we talked about Phil, Paul Casey's up here, believe it or not. Um, J uh, Justin Thomas in the last year, Gary Woodland, guys that just tend to always score more DraftKings points than their actual uh, finishing position is, is very, very valuable. So there you go. This is a new tool. Um, it, it's going to be free. I'm going to put it on my website, dfsondemand.com. It'll be on the PGA Tools page. Um, I'm not going to put it behind the subscription. I, it just doesn't have to be updated often enough for, for me to do that to you. So something I whipped together. I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you have any questions or have any ways that you think we might want to evolve this uh, moving forward, uh, tweet me. It's at DFS On Demand or leave a comment below. Talk to you soon. Good luck.